My soul is exceeding sorrowful. Even unto death. Tear ye here. And watch with me. Hello, and welcome to Good Samaritan Missionary Baptist Church of Ghana. The order of our program will be announcements, musical interlude, then the message. Now here are the news and notes you need to know. I want to inform you, Good Samaritan family and friends, about a project that is sponsored by the youth department. They will be sponsoring a canned food drive. This drive will take place from January until March. And we are asking if you will donate canned goods. You can bring those canned goods here to the church on Mondays when we are here from 10 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. We're looking for your support. This will help the Central and Eastern North Carolina Food Bank. So they need your support. We need your support. The community needs our support. I want all of the people who are my age to enjoy their golden years. I've got great grandchildren out there I haven't seen, and I'm looking. It is your turn. To that. Call your Asking local health department or your family physician. Arrange for your spot for your process. COVID shot. Uh, be aware that we are on the verge of starting a new program called the We Care Program. This is a new initiative here. And the goal is to reach out to all of the Good Samaritan membership and friends. During this COVID period, we want to keep in touch. So you may be receiving a call from someone from Good Samaritan. They're not soliciting anything. They just want to be sure that you are well. Our conference meeting is scheduled for March the 12th. Join in at 645 and the meeting begins at 7 p.m. On March the 14th, join us for our altar call and our live communion service. During our altar call, you can bring your prayer requests and your praise reports. For live communion, we would ask you to prepare your elements beforehand. Now you'll be able to connect into this service at 8.45 a.m. and the live communion will begin at 9 a.m. We hope to see you there.
Welcome to our sanctuary and to our worship service this morning. God bless you. We pray that God has been good to you and we thank you for joining us uh, in this virtual worship service. Uh, this morning I want to share uh, a thought with you from the Gospel of Matthew. You'll find it recorded in chapter 26 beginning with verse 6. This is the King James Version of the reading. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box 
a very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when the disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Amen. I want to preach about uh, this morning from this scripture. Only the best will do. Only the best will do. We certainly are thankful to God as we still find ourselves in the season of Lent, a very important time of the year. Whenever we look at the 26th chapter of Matthew, we have to reflect on, on time. What time is it in the ministry and life of Jesus? This period beginning with Matthew 26 is known as the Passion Narratives. And it talks about the ending, the conclusion, the last week of the life of Jesus, our Savior. The Passion Narratives commence the various significant events that happen in the life of Jesus before he makes his way to Calvary. This is why Lent is so important. This is why, so far, I have been directed to just this 26th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew because there are so many things happening in the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There are so many signs. We see that Matthew 26 is, 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 is wrapped in the time. Uh, factor in the life in the last days of Jesus Christ. Nothing was done by accident, but everything God had a purpose and everything God had a plan as to what is going on in this chapter. The 26th chapter of Matthew, if you look, just survey that chapter, every step ordered by the Lord, every blessing brought healing. Every touch transformed someone's life. Every word spoken brought peace. Jesus, right on time, from his birth all the way to Calvary, always on time. But according to Matthew, in this 26th chapter, something unique begins to happen as we study and look at this text. His final week in ministry, his final week on earth, Jesus uh, is at the home of Simon the leper, relaxing at a place called Bethany. It was at Bethany where Jesus felt comfortable. He had close friends there. It was at Bethany where Jesus raised Lazarus from the grave. It was at Bethany where he uh, fellowshiped with Mary and Martha. They were close friends. And so the ministry is at Bethany now, and Jesus finds himself at a fellowship dinner with friends at Bethany. But something unique happened at this dinner. At the dinner table, up comes a woman with an alabaster box. She comes in, and inside that alabaster box is a very precious ointment. Now, Matthew does not give us her name. It does not tell us many things about this woman. Some think that it was Mary that did this. It doesn't express any motive or any reason, but she just enters the room as the text declares unto us. It's an event, amen, that, that, that she wants to express her love and her concern and her appreciation for Jesus at that moment. Time is very important to Jesus now, and I don't know if she knew, but Jesus' time is running out 
on earth. We don't know if she realized that he was at the end of his ministry or not. But Jesus understands the significance of her actions and her intentions. It was a precious ointment that she took out of that alabaster box. And as the text declares, she took it out this very precious and expensive perfume. And she began to pour it on his head at dinner and began to anoint him with this very precious and expensive ointment. Because she felt that for Jesus, only the best will do. There was a reason here why she did this. We should understand that she thought to give the Lord the very best that she had. And my brothers and sisters, when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to serving the Lord, we ought to give him our best. Only the best will do when it comes to Jesus. We serve an awesome God. We serve an awesome Savior. And so we ought to always endeavor to give God our best. He is an excellent God. He does everything well in every way. His excellency deserves the very best that we can give him. So church, why not the best when it comes to serving God? Our service ought to reflect his excellence. Our service ought to reflect the fact that we won't give up anything substandard, nothing cheap, but only the best will do. This is what this woman does. This is what she deems necessary. While Jesus is with them for the last time, this is what she does. And let's, let's, let's think about it for a moment, that how sometimes we settle for average when it comes to serving God. Sometimes we just put broken pieces together. Sometimes we are satisfied with leftovers. But I'm here to tell you this morning that just as the woman with the alabaster box came into the presence of the Lord, that we ought not give the Lord second hand. This is his last week on earth. This is what Lent is all about. Reminiscing and remembering the sacrifices that he made on our behalf because he gave his best. When it comes to our Lord, when it comes to our Savior, why not the best? Giving him the best. And sometimes folk don't understand what we're doing when we're doing it. The text revealed that the disciples saw what this woman was doing and they didn't understand it. Sometimes there's always some objection and some uh, some objection and some difference to our praise and to the way that we serve the Lord. Sometimes people will tell us, just like these disciples, it doesn't take all that. But I'm here to let you know this morning that we serve and honor an awesome God, and we ought to serve Him and honor Him in an awesome way. Some will tell us that's not necessary. All of that is not necessary. Sometimes they don't agree with our expression. Just like the disciples said, their, their complaint was this precious ointment could have been used for another purpose. It could have been used to feed and assist the poor. They objected to it. They had an opinion to this woman's praise, to this woman's honor. They considered this waste. It could have been used for something else. But, but I've come to the conclusion that sometimes folk just don't understand our praise. They, like the disciples, just don't understand, just like this woman, they didn't understand what this woman had been through. They didn't understand that she brought the best that she had to give it to Jesus. And 
You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Why not the best? I used to act a certain way, used to live and think and talk a certain way. But since I met Jesus, Lord have mercy, he deserves the best. They just didn't know like this woman knew and like some of us know what the Lord has done for me. So she bought her best. Some don't realize what we've been through. Some just don't know how far we have come. And I know I've got somebody here this morning that can witness to the fact that he's been too good to me, that, that he's been mighty kind and that he's brought me from a mighty long way. Somebody here can testify to the fact that if it had not been for the Lord in my life, where would I be? This woman that was there, she just wanted to tell her story. She just wanted to express her love and her obedience and appreciation to the Lord. This woman's testimony at dinner, anointing the head of Jesus as he entered further into the ending of his ministry, was that I have a testimony. And my testimony is that he is worthy. And whatever I have, I'm going to give him the best of it. If there's ever been an opportunity to honor the Lord, it is now. If there's ever been an opportunity to give God your best, then what are we waiting for? Why give him scraps? Why give him fragments? Why give him pieces? Give your best to the Lord. And I want to encourage somebody this morning under the sound of my voice, be like this woman. You've got an alabaster box. Pour out the best praise that you have. Pour out the best gratitude that you have. Jesus' explanation in response to their indignation, in response uh, to their lack of understanding was, she's just doing this before I go to the burial place. She's doing this because this is the last week of my life and I'm going to suffer some agony and suffer some pain. She's doing this while she has a chance. And before I go to the Garden of Gethsemane, before the upper room experience, before I'm betrayed by my very own, she's doing this now. She's doing it before the Palm Sunday crowd convicts me before my closest associates, associates will desert me, before Pilate washes his hand of the matter, before the guards part his raiment, she's doing it now. She's giving him the very best that she has. That's why I serve him now. That's why I honor him now, because I'm going to give him the very best that I have. Why not the best? Give God your best. Pour out of your alabaster box that precious oil. Only you and God knows how precious that is. Give it to him now. Surrender your life now. Give him your hand and your heart now. Pour it out in the name of Jesus, our Lord. If you're interested in learning more about the saving grace the of Jesus Christ or affiliating with this church, please contact us at the email address on the screen.